In this episode, we have a full review of the new Volvo XC90 T8. Sure, it's luxurious and loaded with tech, but can it handle our off-road test course? We'll find out right now on Driving Sports TV. For 2020, Volvo has made a number of subtle changes to their ever-popular XC90 three-row crossover. So subtle, you may not even notice. But that's okay, because the XC90 was already one of the most attractive family crossovers on the market. For 2021, Volvo has already announced this model is a carryover, with only minor adjustments to available packages. If you watched our V60 cross-country review, you know that Volvos equipped with a traditional all-wheel drive powertrain are pretty capable off-road. However, this XC90 is something quite different. Featuring the T8 dual-engine system, this is a plug-in hybrid. With a 2.0-liter 4-cylinder turbo and supercharged petrol engine to power the front wheels, and an electric motor in the back to power the rear axles. Together, this system puts down a combined 400 horsepower and 472 pound-feet of torque, which makes this easily the most powerful XC90 available. But that power comes at a cost. EPA rates this PHEV at a pretty low 55 MPGE combined, with an all-electric range of only 18 miles and gas-only economy of 27 miles to the gallon. If you're looking for thrifty, this isn't the car for you. And that brings us to the price. As you see it here with lots of options, including the inscription, advance, and luxury packages, an upgraded Bowers & Wilkins sound system, metallic paint, air suspension, 21-inch wheels, and more for $86,790 US dollars, including destination. In the back, the XC90 has up to 87.5 cubic feet of total storage capacity. Though this amount of space is good for the class, usability is a mixed bag. Because our test car had the optional air suspension, you can raise or lower the rear with a simple push of a button. However, there are no easy means to fold the second or third rows from the back. Putting the seats up again requires some awkward lifting. The 2021 Volkswagen Atlas, which we're reviewing next week, does this much better with easy pulls for the third row. Under the floor of the XC90 is a storage cubby for the travel charger. The second row has lots of space for a full-size adult with nice amenities. But another odd omission in usability is the lack of USB sockets for passengers. All you get is a 12 volt. You do get two nicely placed cup holders though, plus control over fans and seat warmers. Like most three row crossovers, once you get into it, the last row really isn't intended for adults. Oh yeah, this is nice. All the current generation Volvos are just spectacular on the inside. Uh, you have this nice tablet interface where you can kind of control everything. It's a little overwhelming at first, but after you use it a little bit, it actually kind of makes sense, you know? You have your main controls here, including stereo phone and navigation. Swipe to the right, you get your applications and sound. You can enable the concert hall sound or studio sound, I prefer studio. You can also run apps like Weather, Spotify, and Pandora. Below that, we have seat warmers and coolers, as well as a steering wheel heater, and a, a really easy to use temperature system. Now, unlike the Subaru Outback, which also uses a tablet-style interface, this one runs very quickly. There's no lag at all. And that is what separates the experience, where Subaru's is okay. It's kind of got some nice stuff, has a few little bugs here and there, but more importantly, it's a little slow. When you touch the temperature, you have to wait. This one, it is instantaneous. And it wasn't always like that. The first generation of the system was too slow to tolerate, but now it's actually pretty good. Below that, we have a big volume dial. And what we have down here is a genuine crystal inset uh, for the transmission controller. It's pretty spectacular. I have to admit, it feels really good. You thought leather felt good on the hand? Try crystal. Ooh, that's swanky. Oh, also, now that I have it in reverse, the rear view camera is one of the best I've seen. It's high resolution, has good clarity, and good sense of depth. You could, of course, also get a full 360 view. Volvo is known for safety, and of course we have their IntelliSafe system, which has collision mitigation, it has uh, pedestrian detection, bike detection, lane detection, it has blind spot warnings, rear cross traffic alerts, basically everything that exists 
is in this vehicle short of fully autonomous driving. But it does have, you know, your rudimentary adaptive cruise control with semi-pseudo-autonomous driving. Uh, we'll give that a try on the way up to the mountains. The start ignition is down here, but also right below that is drive mode. And drive mode is very important in this vehicle. With the drive mode, we can switch between a whole bunch of different programs from constant all-wheel drive, Pure, which is Eco Drive, where it tries to use the electric motor as much as possible because this is, of course, a PHEV. There's also Hybrid, which is just everyday power balance. And then Power, where it does not care about saving energy. It'll use all the energy it can to thrust you forward. And then finally, there is Off-Road, which not only does it optimize for low range torque, it also raises the vehicle uh, with the airlift suspension. All very cool things. The gauge cluster is of course all digital and you can customize to your liking, which is pretty cool. The seats, I gotta talk about these seats, man. These are amazing. They're leather, they have great sculpting, good support. Uh, they're heated, they're cooled. Um, I really love them. And the cool thing about this particular vehicle is the second row, the seats are just as good as the first row, which just doesn't happen very often. Man, I am really excited to get this off-road even though it has 21 inch wheels, which are not ideal. But let's go see what we can do, okay? <laughs> Before we head to the mountains, first we're going to see how this e-all-wheel drive system responds to a full throttle start on a gravel road. This is a simple test to see how intrusive the traction control system is and if a noticeable amount of power is produced by the rear motor. First, hybrid mode. As you can see, there is some wheel spin in the front with very little action happening in the back. Next, off-road mode. This adds more power to the back, but as you can see, traction control is still eliminating any spin. Finally, Sport. Here we can see a little spin in the front, but it is tamped down pretty aggressively by the traction control system. We'll get more into the e-all-wheel drive system later in this video, when we tackle some real obstacles. Of course, Volvo, they stake their brand on safety. And this one is loaded with all the stuff you would expect, especially uh, for the price of $87,000. You get blind spot warning, collision mitigation, pedestrian detection, bicycle detection, rear cross traffic alerts, yada yada, you get it all. But what I find most compelling about this vehicle isn't the fact that it has all of that, or even that it has adaptive cruise control. It's the fact that even in weather like this, I can still turn on what they call their steering assist. I can set my target speed, we'll set it for 65, and it can read the lanes and drive between them dead centered, no problem at all. Recently, I had a rental, it was a, um, what was that, a Nissan Rogue, and I was in the southeast and it rained a little bit. And whenever there would be the slightest amount of rain, it would say, nope, 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 can't do that. Can't, nope, nope, can't auto steer anymore. That's, that. oh, this is too complicated. But the Volvo, the Volvo, it has no problem. It's completely unfazed by the fact that even human visibility is a bit obscured. And that is pretty amazing. Those Swedes got it right, man. This is fantastic. Okay, so let's get out from behind this dump truck because we have more interesting things to do as we head deeper into the mountains where we're gonna test out the all-wheel drive system on this e-all-wheel drive T8. Now they call it a dual motor system. What does that mean? Well, up front it's an inline four that is both supercharged and turbocharged. And then in addition to that, they have an electric motor to power the back wheels. And it's not mounted all the way in the back, it's actually mounted more midship, which gives this a really good weight balance. I mean, you're looking at like 52% or so of weight over the front wheels, which is pretty good for a vehicle like this. Uh, that should really help with you know, balance and also with even distribution of power when it's necessary. The brakes on this are actually really nice because they feel like regular brakes. I have, I don't know when the transition is between regen and just brakes, which is how it should be, but it isn't always that way. Okay, let's find a spot here to do a zero to 60 and see exactly how quick this is. So even in like poor visibility uh, like this, 
The road is super wet. It's raining a little bit. Just the overall feel of this vehicle is really quite nice. And I can even switch the drive mode down to power, which will optimize the steering and the transmission for sportier driving. Whoa, this is quick. Ha! <laughs> okay, that's, that's cool. And three, two, one, go. Whoa, everything flies back. Whoa, that's quick. And 60. Okay, so this is timing in the wet, 5.81 seconds, zero to 60, with a 2.24 on the brake. That's pretty awesome, I think. Very good performance. I mean, really, in the wet especially, you're looking at losing almost a second, if not more, because of the wet. Very impressive. But will it impress quite as much when we take it onto the loose stuff? Well, let's take it up to our regular off-road course and see how it does. So here we are at the first challenge. Now, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and raise the vehicle up because I'm a little concerned about scratching the underside. Uh, so all I do is go to drive mode, pick off-road, and it'll raise the vehicle up. Okay, now that we're all done, let's go ahead back into drive, and away we go. So the whole point of off-road mode is, is it enables the e-differential style lockers that we've seen on so many other vehicles where they'll break an individual wheel to redistribute power back into the system. Now this all-wheel drive system is a little bit different than what a normal petrol all-wheel drive system would look like. This is a gas motor up front powering exclusively the front wheels and then in the back we have uh, I think it's about 87 horsepower electric motor powering just the back wheels. So that actually gives a pretty good amount of torque to the rear the question is, is how well does this system work overall as it shifts power left and right, but then also uses that electric motor for the back? It's struggling a little bit already. Whoa, whoa, it is slippery today. I do have to say that if you're going to compare this to any of the reviews we did over the summer, uh, this is going to be a more challenging drive simply because of lack of traction on slick rocks. Come on. Wow, these tires suck. <laughs> Pirelli Scorpions, man. I'm in off-road mode, I'm in drive, and I got nothing. Okay, let's, uh, let's reapproach this. A little bit more momentum. I'm gonna take a look outside, see what this is, has going on, because this is weird. I've never gotten stuck here. So we're on rock here, and we're on rock there. This shouldn't be that hard. This is always just supposed to be the warm up. This isn't supposed to be the thing. Okay, let's go back. Gotta rewind just a little. Bump, 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 bump. Okay, and away we go. Drive. Come on, are you gonna? Now I have battery, so it should be uh, using. Oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> Why do you have an off road mode that does nothing? It raises the vehicle, but geez. Come on, you got this, you got this. <sighs> you know, it looks like I should be able to do this. <sighs> to put my hat on, see if that helps. Okay, and roll back. And I still have battery life. Okay, drive. Let's roll back. We'll get a little bit more on the left. And straddle that gutter. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. I wanna get up to the main course. You got this, you got this, oof. Okay. 
That was way harder than I expected it to be there. Huh. Well, this will definitely be more interesting than I thought. After that last little bit, I'm a little concerned about our main hill climb test. So let's hope this works out. I'm already in off-road mode, which in theory, at least, should uh, use brakes to redistribute power throughout the system. And of course, the front and the back are not physically connected, so they can only really pass power left and right. Let's see if this is effective. Actually, let's be honest. We know from back there, not very effective. But let's just see if we can even get up this. If we can't, it'll be the first vehicle unable to make it. We might just have to take the simple line. Let's find out. Now, there's no displays here for me to adjust. I mean, I, I can't see what the four-wheel drive system or the all-wheel drive system is actually doing. I just have to kind of hear and feel what's going on. Now, my battery power is currently at three pegs, so I have plenty of battery power to at least get up this. Now, here's the first challenge. This is going to put all of the weight on this wheel and that wheel, and it's going to basically make it difficult, unless this has great articulation, which we'll see from the outside. Uh, these two wheels will probably not be touching the ground. Let's see. Okay. First challenge. Now, normally, I could just put throttle on, and it will get me through this. Slowly. Come on. Are you doing it? Are you doing it? It's moving slowly. I'm feeling progress. Okay. So it'll do it, but it does take its own sweet time. I mean, really, that little test right there is, it is the stereotypical off-roading test. No power on this wheel or this wheel, and then you also are on an incline. Here we're on about a 20% grade. So it's not exactly intense, but it's definitely a hill, and it's definitely pushing a lot of the power to the back. Okay, now let's head on to the next bit. Now, the funny thing is, as I've been sitting between takes, between camera shots, uh, the battery's actually been refilling. So now I'm actually up to uh, four pegs of battery. Let's see, let's go ahead and turn on the surround view camera. I can't remember where that is. Um, camera, camera, let's go there. Swipe over there. Nope. Is it over here? Nope. It's here somewhere. Camera. Okay, so 360 view camera. I want to try to align with that log right there. So I can put my wheel right on it. That should give it a nice element of challenge. Remember, the idea here isn't just to get up, it's actually to test different aspects of the system. That's this is like when one wheel gets a little more slip than others. Oh, that's not too bad. That worked. Okay, I think for this final bit, we're going to go to the right of the big rock, and we're going to go into the ditch. We'll see how that does. Again, this should lift that back left wheel, but should have power on three other wheels. There we go. There we go. Okay. Again, it's all about seeing how the system works under stress. If we just take the simple line through this, that's not doing anybody any good. You're not learning anything. So let's see here. This isn't about how to take a line. It's about how this system responds to tricky situations. I'm just gonna keep the throttle in. It eventually figures it out. It does take a little longer than some other systems. A lot of people ask, how fast can you go in off-road mode? And it's not very fast. You're looking at about mid-20s, like 22, 23, which is plenty for off-roading. You don't wanna go any faster than that in tricky situations. The next question is then, of course, why can't you go faster? And it's like, well, when would you really need individual wheel braking at high speeds? I mean, other than theoretical, because at that point you have momentum and mass, um, which are definitely going to be, you know, individual wheel braking. It's still going to do it because of the ABS and the vectoring system, the yaw control. So with yaw control, you're still going to keep the vehicle pointing straight, but it's not going to need that power distribution for... Uh, channeling the maximum amount of power to get out of a tricky situation. Does that make sense? I'm not sure if I'm explaining it very well, but point being, you don't really need the off-road system at high speed on a freeway. It's just not going to do you any good. Uh, it has other systems for those situations. Okay, now let's try downhill. I am noting that it is doing downhill braking, you know, hill descent control. Uh, it's just quicker than I would really like. And no, there seems to be no way to 
slow it down, it just does its one speed, which is four miles per hour. But we're not done with the XC90 quite yet. We've got one more test. Of course, not everybody's gonna be climbing rocks. Some people have dirt and sand. So we've come to another location to see how well this off-road mode does in uh, kind of sandy beachy conditions. Let's see what we got. So this is a simple one to start with. It's just gonna be a little articulation. I'm gonna not take the best line on purpose because again, we wanna stress. Wow, that uh, approach angle is actually quite good. Okay, let's see how this does. I'm just laying in the throttle and it's figuring it out as it pushes power around and gets me out of the situation. Yeah, okay, let's uh, do the same thing in reverse and see how it does. Go in deep. And I'm gonna cut in on the corner on purpose a little more than one should to try to get as little traction as possible. Okay, the spinning wheels, I'm just laying the throttle in. Straightening out the wheel. See how it figures it out? Does it figure it out? It's working on it. I feel like I'm digging myself lower and lower. I think I better uh, get a new position or I'm gonna be walking home. Okay. <laughs> okay, so not ideal. Oh boy. Okay. Can I get out this way? Okay, as we've seen now, both with rocks and with sand, sand and dirt, it's good to a point. However, that point, the bar is pretty low as to what you can actually accomplish in this vehicle. Again, this is really a vehicle for around town, for light dirt roads, you know, to trailheads, nothing terribly complicated because this system just really isn't up to the task. However, for everything else that it does do, it does an amazing job, and especially that adaptive cruise control is one of the best. If everyday usability around town, city, country is what you want, this is the ultimate vehicle. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, uh, and tell us what you think. We have a new video every single week, so be sure to subscribe. We'll see you again right here.